It's uncompromising, addictive, and often unforgiving with an adrenaline rush like no other. There is no practice, no second chances. It's the ultimate motorsport competition on gravel. It is rally, and this is the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship. Welcome to round two, coming to you from the National Capital Rally in Canberra. In today's program, we'll showcase the fight between Polaris and Can-Am in the Australian side-by-side -side series. The seesaw battle between manufacturers takes another turn with some added boost to the Maverick. Can the Razor respond? This is the territory where the Don Capasco and Castrol events of the 70s and 80s helped cement rally in this country almost its spiritual home. See how they fare against the current day master on his home soil 40 years later. And of course we'll feature the Armour All STP Power Stage. Both the Outright Championship and Four Wheel Drive National Series have a chance to bag some points early. Well, Dino, back in Cowan Forest, that brings back memories for both you and me. <laughs> it does. We've both competed competitively here, various amounts of success. It's actually a great and iconic rally stages around here, isn't it? It certainly is, especially these couple of corners behind us are nice and flowing. You can get them in sideways. The big thing is the tunnel over there, over there, through the tunnel and over the top. What's great about having the tunnel in the forest, we get a true forest stage. We've got an amphitheatre feel, which is perfect for our power stage. Certainly is, and uh, what a power stage it's going to be with those two new cars, the, the Maxi and the Dyco, of course. Yes. So Justin Dow and Mark Pett are debuting those cars, and we'll learn more about them this weekend. Paul Mark's going to be basically testing him on the power stage. First time he's going to be in that car, which is tough for any driver as they debut that car. And you've got to really be on your wits to get into this. They're going to be racing against some of the four-wheel drive locals who are very quick. And outright was awesome in Perth. Going to be the same here. Certainly, and outright two-wheel drive. Molly Taylor did a great job in Western Australia, and she's back in the field again. So is Simon Evans in a Honda Jazz. Yes. Up against Eli, a big punch up there. We love the vibes <laughs> between the brothers. We do. We keep talking about to get in, it's so intense this stage. To get into the final, you have to do a great job. The field up and down is so good, you've got to be on it. And you've got to be on it because this power stage is so important for points going into the main event. That sets your weekend up, doesn't it? And we're looking forward to a fantastic weekend from our point of view. It'll be a big weekend. In 2015, both outright and four-wheel drive get the opportunity to start the National Capital Rally with points from the Armour STP Power Stage. Just three places are on offer for a maximum of five bonus points. And just one qualifying run is allowed, so there are no second chances. The fastest three in each class will then face off for a one-time shot at those points. Last round, Simon Evans came out on top in the power stage ahead of the two Citroens of Coppin and Sons. The surprise was Eli, who missed the cut altogether in his first outing for the factory Citroen squad. Doug Tostevin was quickest of the four-wheel drives. He and another quick local, Dylan King, were split by Justin Dow from Victoria. With the growth of Canberra pushing the suburbs further out, the roads that once were a feature of the old rally of Canberra are now packed with houses. 2014 marked the last time this area would be used for any form of rallying, so this year we're off to Cowan Forest, to the east of the capital. It's an ideal venue for the Armorall STP power stage and promises to be a great run. From the start, drivers will dive under the Kumo Tyre Tunnel and into the arena that will be home to the Coates Rally Spectator Village over the weekend. Zigzagging between the barrels, they make their way down to ECB Bend and onto the straight, leading to the first split at Polaris Pinch. Coates Corner is next, heading to the second split, Can-Am Corner. Another square left onto the longest and fastest straight in a power stage this year. The STP speed trap leads to the final obstacle, a jump over the tunnel through the flying finish, literally. Dunko's just been around the track, so let's find out what he thinks. <laughs> Ross Duncan, and look at the smile on his face, our five times Australian rally champion. And where did you borrow this car from to start with? I don't know, it was just uh, over in the car park. What about this STP and overall power stage? Mate, all I can say in three words, it's fast, fast, 
and faster. It'll be the fastest power stage that we've ever done. The last part of it, as you come down over the final jump, am I going to go over the top of the arch or aren't I? That's how fast it is. But it's a tricky stage. You know, you start off, you go through the tunnel, a couple of lefts and rights, down to a square left-hander, then a big long straight, up over crest, tricky chicane, into a very rough approach to a left-hander, get round there, down the straight, bog down a bit, left-hander again, and then bump, 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 over a couple of jumps, to the finish! Fantastic! <laughs> it seems Great. like if you're going to get the points here, you're going to have to be committed. Well, we're about to, Ross, <laughs> back to uh, to Rusty for the highlights, but guess what? Here's your armour all product. Oh, Justin Dow's you. who you borrowed this car from. Oh, right, okay. Outside, inside, mate. You'll be doing a bit of work, okay? okay. Get the car all clean. Right, and right. Rusty, it's back to you to recap those qualifying highlights. Thank you, boys. Get to work, Dunco. 11 cars lined up for the four-wheel drive qualifying with all eyes on the new generation cars of Justin Dowell and Mark Pedder. Pedder's Maxi Peugeot 208 race engine was fired for the first time 24 hours ago after being finally cleared from customs. You couldn't believe it. We've got no accelerator. With the computer shutting down the engine, he and Dale Moskett limped through. No, we've got it back again. 200, turn clip. Neither Andrew Penny nor Peter Dunn could break the two-minute barrier in their Subarus, and Guy Tyler upset the experienced Michael Bailey in his earlier model Evo 5. Gerald Schofield launched the Fibertech Medical Evo 9 into the 1 minute 57s. The fast guys kept coming. Mick Patton broke 1 minute 56 and the teeth on second gear in the Repco Evo 10 allowing rally rookie JJ Hatton to sniff a top three berth, but he missed by just half a second. Justin Dowell pushed the brand new LG Dyteco Hyundai i20 as hard as he dared, snaring the second fastest qualifying time ahead of Tasmania's Marcus and Scott Walkham. But it was Richie Dalton in the chip shop who was tip top four seconds quicker than anyone else. So, Marcus Walkham, Justin Dowell and Richie Dalton will line up for the second ever Armour All STP four-wheel drive power stage. All that action coming up right after the break. Welcome back to the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship. It's a brilliant day here in the nation's capital. Dean is on the line with the first of our qualifiers in the Armour All STP Power Stage. So it's Marcus and Scott Walcom who are the first into our STP and Armour All Power Stage. Mate, well done. Got in on the qualifying. Good run. Yeah, no, thanks, Dean. Uh, we had a pretty tidy run through there, so just looking to do the same again. I just spoke to Dunker at the start. He said big commitment through here. Do you think you can knock off the couple of guys, the ARC regulars? Oh, look, it'd be nice to, but it's a long rally. You know, we want to we want to be here on Sunday, so um, we'll just have a crack and see where we end up. That's what we like, have a crack, guys. Enjoy, and well done for getting in. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Well said, Dino. Very good performance in qualifying for this pairing from Tasmania. Here we go. Here we go. Tunnel. Car grips Still up nicely right off the start line. This first section of the course so important to get right as they weave around the barrels left here. Then it's weight right, then 200, then four left. Jolt. Turn four left here. Real bone jarring jolt in fact. 200 over past brow, stay left. And 120 over brow into chicane right entry. Mitsubishi stretching its legs here. Brow. 120 into chicane, right entry. Car Three number 13, hopefully not an unlucky charm nice. for this round of the series. They weave through here, through Polaris, and very nice. We're through the right pinch, the first split. Turn, that left. gives us our benchmark for the Breaking. runners that will follow. On eight right. Looks like a Three moonscape, doesn't here. it, from up high here, our shot. Nice line through the left-hander. Left, over bump, then nine right. Then 50 turn left three, do not cut. Out of coats and heading towards Can Am corner turn now. We'll three, get our second cut. split shortly. Then 50, two fast brows. Look at the dust being two kicked up. Two fast in GLF 600. One, two, then 600. Oh, with a bit of air. Pump at end of road on right. So important not to nosedive off those. And fast. 
193 kilometres an hour at the STP speed trap. That's got his attention. Last brow, then 200. Caution crest, middle air, then 100. And through the finish. Good work, Puff. Nice air. The marker laid down by the Walkhams, a 149.24. Good start by this pairing. Oh, it was good. It's a great little stage, so um, I don't know how, what sort of time we did, but um, yeah, we kept it pretty tidy, so it should be all right. We take a look at the replay here, and this corner was... The execution was superb. Carried great speed through there and got some good air as well. Nice work. Justin Dow and Matt Lee, former champs. Five seconds fast for the walking boys, so they've gone pretty quick in there. Yeah, it's, uh, I think second time round would be a lot better. You know how hard to hit all the jumps and so on. But, uh, you know, we can't get too carried away with that sort of thing. Uh, we just got to make sure we have a good, clean run and, and really enjoying the new Hyundai. It's uh, it's an amazing car to drive and so so... It just so rewarding. Everything's smooth, easy. It's very nimble. It's going to be a lot of fun. That's all that matters. Well, you summed it up. I was going to ask you about the new machine. I looked to take off the start line. It went off like a rocket, mate. It must be an absolute joy to drive this thing. Yeah, it's got all the technology, you know, launch control, the sequential shift, all that sort of stuff. So um, it's got all the bells and whistles, and it's a very good car. Well, good luck on the power stage, mate. Thank you. Have a look at this one, Rusty. Off the line. New G4 red car, and uh, very, very quick. It's had a great reaction from the fans, Dino, hasn't it? Looks aggressive. One, go. Six, six, Look at the way it bites off the line. Justin Dow again partnered with Matt Lee. Okay, short eight right into tunnel and two right in narrow. Into two left edge. His whole feeling after qualifying was he just had to attack this stage from beginning to end. And he plans to do that here. One fifty. Nicely the through the left hander carries good speed through there. They've been working 30. on ride heights with this car, trying to settle right the entry, back end of it. That looked good there. One fifty. The marker is Walkham's. Let's see right if he's up. Brow. Narrow, but it's an advantage at the moment to Justin Dow. One hundred. Rough entry. Hug seven right in on exit. Every outing they have in this car, they feel like they're getting more and more to grips with it, quicker with it. They'll put it on a bit of a weight loss program in the months ahead and hopefully find a, a little more of an advantage, a bit more speed. Loose entry, two left at end, late. 50. Second split now, but he's dropped a bit of time relative to Walkham. Flat jump into hump, 100. Doesn't get as much air there. Flat jump, But it does look stable. 186 kilometres an hour. Now remember the Walkhams were Straight into the 190s. Crest, yeah, that could be telling. 200. Pinned. Yeah, straight and over bridge. Yeah, maybe. Flying finish break. 50, long three left. Well done. And he's down. Not quite able to match. It does recover a little bit of time mate. in that final sector. Hey, not enough. Nah, it's about as far as fast as I want to go at the moment. Still learning the car, but that's a lot of fun. Um, and she's not going to have the legs of the unrestricted car because it's, it's, it's fairly flat out, all that sort of stuff. But I'm happy with that because the car's amazing. Take a look at the replay here and through the Polaris pinch. Nice straight line. Little bit of air at the end as he recovered some time, but not enough to knock the Walkhams off. A reprieve for Marcus and Scott, but the hard-charging Irishman is still to run. Back in a moment. You're watching the Arbor All STP Power Stage coming to you from the National Capital Rally in Canberra. Dean Herridge is with our fastest qualifier taking part in his first ever Power Stage. Richie Dalton and John Allen are the fastest qualifiers in the Evo, mate. And the boys have gone pretty quick on their second pass. Let me give you some time. So we've got Justin down into 150.3. But the Walkhams look like they're in front, 149.2. So you guys are having a dip. Yeah, yeah, we're going to have to have a crack. I think um, it's literally 
I'm just going to hold it flat and hang on for dear life. <laughs> <laughs> Most people talk to us about the power stage and go, oh, I've got to look at the rally and everything else. I love your approach, mate. You're a flat out guy. And John Allen's light eyes lit up there when you said, I'm going to hit everything flat. That's it. We're, we're here. We're here to expose our sponsors too, so we, we need to we need to perform as well, so we're here to win. You've got some great supporters, mate, as you say. Good luck on this one. We can't wait to see you run through here. Have a look at this one, Rusty. One of the guys who's saying our power stage, we're going to hit everything flat. They have studied the stage intently, Dino. He reckons he knows every inch of it. Richie Dalton, here we go. Makes a nice start, grips up well. Their goal was to qualify for the power stage for their sponsors, but to try and win it as well. Nicely into the tunnel. Perhaps a little cautious looking through here. Now stretches the legs of the Mitsubishi. Look at him. Aggressive. They feel this car's good on the medium rubber and they're running medium compound tyres for the stage. On the harder compounds, they've just experienced it being a little nervous in the rear. This is good. Chicane for left plus. All right through the Polaris pinch and this will give us the time. He is up and it's a good advantage at the moment. Great start. Then hug the five right, rough OK, 50. Yeah, great, he's coming in, wide entry. But keep in mind too that Richie, compared to his rivals, is still a bit of a newcomer to rallying. This is tremendous. Carries good speed through the left-hander. Fast turn three left, plus keep out, use the exit. Second split, and he continues to build. Look at it, two seconds is the advantage. Richie Dalton is on fire here. They've overhauled this car in the off season after a brilliant 2014. New turbo, new diff, overhauled the suspension, and he is attacking 208 kilometers an hour at the STP speed trap. That's off the charts compared to his rivals. Entry flying, finish three left. Nice there! Nose dive at the Sorry. finish! <laughs> Pull up, big guy. He went so fast, didn't even get the time, but uh, you, can't stop him in the the you can't stop him in the air, mate. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, all right, Richie. You just set a new record on the power stage, 208 kilometres an hour, and just take a look at that jump. Biggest air we've seen so far at that point. Look how violent it was in the cockpit. That's huge! I'm over the jump there. I was just trying to pull it up to get around the bend and the clutch is on the floor, so I don't know why. Probably because you went too fast, I reckon. <laughs> we got here anyway. Did we win? <laughs> you sure did, Richie. You and John are the Armour All Power Stage winners for round two. What well up, mate? Well well <laughs> Ross Duncan and the, the four wheel drive nationals, didn't they have a go in there? Mate, Qantas has just contacted Richie Dalton <laughs> to see whether he'll fly the next 747. <laughs> they were flying indeed. Very committed by all the three teams in there. Some great cars and good driving through here. Well, they certainly are, and of course they're unrestricted, so they've got more horsepower than the, the two-wheel drive, so we'll see quite a bit of difference in the speed between the two models of cars, you know, but uh, commitment is a big thing, and Richie, what a, what, a, what a spectacular jump. I reckon he would have been jumping onto the uh, top of the, uh, the arch yeah. there. Well, you said that after yeah. your run. But the thing was about that, you had to be fast everywhere else, and he's a very committed driver and on here. That paid dividends. I mean, obviously, he's not probably super happy with the fact he's jumped and given the boys a bit of work to do, maybe, but he's got the points on the board. Well, you know, if you, if you want to win, you've got to be committed, and he is the most committed so far. Let's see what happens to the two-wheel drive. We're about to go to the outrights now, and you can recap the highlights for us, Rusty. Thanks guys, Ashley James got his first taste of the power stage after a last minute dash to WA and he missed round one. Only half a second separated Molly Taylor's high-tech oils Renault from the Opticote Fiesta of Steve McKenzie and Tony Sullen's Fibertech Medical Citroen. Three makes all neck and neck in the super fast special stage. Sullen's old teammate Adrian Coppen picked him for third spot by almost a second to secure a berth, while the Evans brothers fought out for fastest qualifier. This was the first outing for the tank former's Honda Jazz since Eli won the championship in it two years ago. But now it was in the hands of older brother Simon. Youth won through. Eli setting a time in the factory Citroen DS3 almost a second quicker than Simon. So, 
Adrian Coppin, Simon Evans and Eli Evans face off in the Armour All STP Power Stage coming up in just a few moments. You're watching the Armour All STP Power Stage here at the National Capital Rally in Canberra. The four-wheel drive competition has been won. Now it's the turn of the two-wheel drive outright competitors. Here's our Dean Herridge on the start line. Adrian Coppin and Aaron Kelly in the DS3. Fantastic job, mate. You're making a habit of getting into these uh, STP and Armour All power stages, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, it was a really good start. Pretty, really, really happy to be here. Um, you know, after, after the tails and all the hard work from the boys to uh, get us here and get the car sorted again, it's really good to uh, get in with the qualifying and um, you know, we'll have a crack in here and see how we can go. And you're a local lad, of course, so it's good to have you here, home fans, and lots of home support for you here. Yeah, it's really good. It's you know, nothing like doing a home rally, as you'd know. You don't have your friends and family come out and support you, so hopefully we can put on a good show for them and uh, grab a few extra points here to start the weekend. How do you like this stage, mate? Yeah, look, it's fast. Uh, they approach to the tunnels um, fast. I think we're in sixth gear for like you know the majority of the straight. Yeah. Um, but it's cool with a little jump and stuff at the end, yeah. so it should be a uh, good spectacle for the rally village tomorrow as well, I think. The first of our uh, two-wheel drives out there, mate. Good luck, eh? Thanks, Dean. No cheers. Five, four, He's local, three, as Dean said, and takes a really active interest in the behind-the-scenes organisation of this event. Makes a good start, Adrian Coppin. Four, Look at the eyes. Relatively new co-driver pairing as well, running with Erin Kelly this season. Five and a half right neat. through the bollards there before and now we head through the left hander tiny black crest 50 right entry chicane and this will give us an idea at the polaris pinch 180 the benchmark time it's a little obscure just as you arrive there you've actually got to make sure you get a nice Clean line yeah, through there, but don't break too late on the entry. 70, turn three left, neat. 120. Used a bit of the right hand side of the Short road there. Left. Cuts it tight through the left. Six right narrows brow. 130. Turn three left, room, powder. 80. Warning them about the dust, about the powder at this point through the left hander. Try and keep that traction through the second split. Can am corner there, and we head now toward the STP speed zone. Let's see what the Citroen's capable of. Small flat crest. 175 kilometres an hour. 150 flat crest stay mid. 100. Small jump posts. 100. Big jump, 120, three left loop. And through to the finish, little bit of air, but you might say just erring on the side of caution. There is a long way to go in this event. Great, but he qualified for the power stage. A couple seconds faster than the qualifying run, so it was faster, which is good. Uh, I guess we'll just see what the, uh, the boys behind do. As you know, they do tend to step it up between qualifying and the main run as we take a look at the effort through that left-hander and the run toward the finish. Little bit of air, but no high jumps. Simon Evans and Ben Sears again, the new Honda, mate, the Tank Formers car. Great to have you here and got, the, got your brother behind you. Won't be liking that. Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> it's, uh, look, it's great to be in the race, you know, and uh, yeah, I got the little jazz of it debuting it, so I'm still adjusting, come to terms with it, but geez, I love driving this car. It's so aggressive. Yeah, and that suits your style, mate. That's exactly what you like. So you feel this sort of is better than the Civic you ran in Perth? Oh, mate, it's fantastic. Like, I, I don't know if it's better. The Civic was pretty cool too, yeah. so. but yeah, just, yeah, it's just different. And, um, but this thing's yeah, a bit shorter. It's a bit lighter, so it stops better. It's, uh, yeah, if I can drive it to the car's ability, it'll be a good day. Well, if there's someone who's going to do that, it's going to be you, mate. And it's about a second between you both, so there's nothing in it. It's going to come down to the pressure of this one stage, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, hopefully no mistakes. Eyes on, mate. Go for it. That's it, mate. Cheers. That's what we've been waiting for, Rusty. The Evans brothers, both the fastest qualifiers, and here's their chance on the Canberra STP and Armour All Power Stage. This five, will be exciting, four, Dino. Three, two, one, go. They've tuned the engine on this car themselves. Really pleased with it, Simon Evans, too. Good talk 
That was his main objective, but they haven't compromised top end power. He's marked in the notes that the lines through these bollards super important. Don't blink too late for the chicane either. He felt he did that in qualifying, and that compromised his exit. Listen to it revving. As he said to Dean there, it's, it's lighter this car and he can feel the difference that makes compared to the Civic. This is what he was talking about. He felt he overcooked it slightly in qualifying. That hurt his exit. He's up at the Polaris split. That comes long, 150. Fast right to late over crest. 100. Turn fast left three. Gets through the left hander nicely. They have found this car in some of the testing to be a little twitchier compared to the Civic. So they've dialed, made some significant changes to it. But boy, it turns easily, doesn't it? Now at the second split, this is Can Am corner. Unbelievable the way he attacks through there. And he has the advantage. It also marked that corner, had to get it right. Power early, out of that turn for the run to the finish. 177 kilometres an hour. It's a gain relative to Adrian Coppen in speed terms. Pinned, listen to the Honda. And gets a bit of air. Simon Evans will move to the top of the board here on the Armour All STP Power Stage. On my clock. There you go, jumped out of second gear in there too, so we lost a second, I reckon, but uh, I was trying hard, I wanted to beat Eli. <laughs> on debut, you're pretty happy with it? Oh, it's a fantastic car. It, uh, it responds so well, like it, when I'm making mistakes, the car's making up for me, so, no, nah, it's fantastic. It's good to, uh, good to be in the little jazz. It's uh, just a little bit better than the Civic. See if we can try and isolate some of the things he's talking about here. Look at this. Oh, just brushes the bollard. The line was near perfect. And here's the, there you are. So it did pop out of gear, as Simon suggested. Didn't hurt the end result, though. Citroen out and Honda in. But there's another Citroen to come. Brother v brother, right after the break. Back to the Armour All STP Power Stage from the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship in Canberra. Dean Herridge is on the start line with our fastest qualifier in outright two-wheel drive, Eli Evans. We didn't qualify at the last one, did we, at, uh, at Bustledon, so just had to make sure we got into the top three to give ourselves a chance at those five championship points. Um, we're going to need them. It's going to be a tight year all year, and Sitchin ran faultlessly on the run, first run through, and it was a nice little surprise to be the fastest qualifier. Now, one thing you won't be surprised about is Simon's pushed in there pretty hard. He's done a 156.2. So uh, that's a pretty strong time in there. You can't make a mistake, can you? Yeah, look, it's pretty close to our first run through, and we didn't do much wrong. So, yeah. uh, you know, one little mistake, and Simon will take the five points, so we can't have that. So it's just going to be absolutely flat out from here. I want those five points, and I want Simon to get them. I know in previous years you've sort of talked more of a game on, you know, a bit of strategy and not being a bit careful, but does it make any difference that it's your brother or anyone you'd be going for the five points? Oh, I always want the five points, Dino. I think you got the wrong guy. I've always <laughs> wanted it. It's the power stage. Yeah. This is what we're here to do. So, yeah, to, to beat Simon, because I know he'll have a big smile on his face if he beats me, so I want to be the one with the smile on my face. Well, we can't wait to see who Thanks, does five. have the big smile, mate. Go for it. Let's go. Five. Nice work, Four, Dean. Gave us a good three, sense of the rivalry between the brothers, too. Here we go. 72, oh, did it bite? Maybe not quite as well as Simon's. Eli said to us in the build-up to this, he plans to tackle this stage a bit like a circuit racer because of the nature of the corners. You've got to maximise your entry and exit speeds. Watch for him to use as much of the road as possible here. Wide entry, turn very fast left three. A little bit of news coming through from Dean as well. He's chosen a different tyre to the other competitors for this one. The 900 closed tyre. Thinks it might work a little better on the rockier style of surface here in Canberra. 50, left right chicane. 
really enjoying his time in the Citroen. Very different car to others that he's campaigned in recent time, like the Honda, and he's up versus Simon. He is up at the first split, the Polaris pinch. 50. Turn very fast, left three. A lot of low down torque in this car. Very good in the tight 70. stuff, but at the moment we're stretching the legs through Coates higher. Coates corner, oh, eight. very oh, wide right off the exit. That's exactly what he said he was going to do. Maximise, use 70. all of the road possible. Fast left three, slides on entry. Second split. Looks like he's continued to build on it. It's significant. Two Press seconds doubles. over Simon Evans. 700. They've opted for a map setting in this car too that gives it a bit more linear boost rather than an aggressive setting. And he's finding it quite user-friendly. 179 kilometres an hour for this class. That's the best we've seen so far at the STP Speed Trap. 50, care fast, left three clean. Well done, Eli Evans and Glenn Weston. They have smashed it. That is a power stage to perfection. Great work. The adrenaline, I don't think I took one breath in there. I, <laughs> I thought about it so much. I worked myself up so much. So I'm so happy that we were able to take the five points. And after I spoke to Dino, I was so excited. And I closed the door. And I just had to calm down and relax and take some breath. So, but uh, it's nice to be the big brother. <laughs> you could sense that intensity, couldn't you? As we take a look at the replay, it didn't look like it pulled all that strongly off the line, but the rest of it was superb. Through Polaris Pinch, stays away from the dust off to the right of this corner by taking the nice tight inside line. And so out with the old, in with the new. A great win to Eli, despite that slow start off the line. Wouldn't take off, you know, we used the launch control and, um, you know, it's just making too much grip and it bogged down. So I slipped the clutch again and it still didn't want to go. So, you know, from that point I thought, well, there, I could feel it. That was probably half a second I lost, so I thought, well, we've got to try and make this up now. Let's just go for it. There you have it, a power stage apiece to the Evans brothers. And you can see how the full rally panned out same time next week. Right now, though, it's time for those classics. <laughs> It was a special event for Neil Bates and Coral Taylor. Sure, it was Bates' home event, but both their kids were competing as well. Molly Taylor at the wheel of the high-tech oils Renault and Harry Bates in only his third ever rally in a standard front-wheel drive Corolla. The distraction was evident from the start. The normally Mr. Never Put a Foot Wrong spun in the very first stage. Again in the second, and yet again in the third. Into leg five, right? Oh. Five. Oh. Ah, ah, what are we doing? Ah. Left five, right five, 50. Still, he headed the field by nearly two minutes, so the distraction hadn't affected him too much. Seven different models were represented in the classics this round. Brett Stevens was next fastest in the Nissan Bluebird, with Clay Badenoch's Celica RA40 replica of Neil Bates' replica third. Badenoch and Tony Quinn played seesaw for third. Quinn in the BMW eventually edging the fellow Queenslander back into third. Game over for that heat. And it was game over for Josh Hilton when two broken control arms stopped his rally short in SS2. Two miles had come more than a few thousand kilometres to tick off their bucket list. Yeah, well, I've gone 60 now, so I reckon I've probably got about 20 good years left in me, and, and, and I'm, I'm going I'm to keep living. He and wife Kathy were living all right, on the edge, throwing the V8 Commodore around in some of the ACT's finest dust. They're different to what I expected them to be. Really different to what I expected them to be. No classic event would be a classic without the sound of a screaming BDA engine. Max Roberts was doing his bit for that cause. I suppose one of my major disappointments with this car, I never get to hear it out in the bush. But uh, that's the reason I built it, was to, to have fun with it. I, I tried to retire and after 20 years retirement, uh, the disease took over and I built the thing. And uh, with a lot of help from a lot of people. And...
An off-road excursion for the Stevens Bluebird made life a touch easier for Badenoch, who cemented second place for the event. Oh, four left into four right, then three left. Trevor Stilling plugged away in his Datsun stanza, resigned to the best position he might get in his home round. I'd like to think we could come third behind the two Salikas again. That's probably the best we can with this car. Yep. It's not the fastest car around, but mm -hmm. it's pretty reliable. First non Salika. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Quinn had other ideas. The pet food come chocolate baron edging Stilling out for the final spot on the weekend podium. Bates and Badenoch took the two top spots, as Stilling predicted. No doubt the former Aussie champ will be relishing the chance to tackle the Queenslanders next month on their home turf. And it's Turf Wars next, when Can-Am and Polaris go head-to-head -head in the Australian Side-by-Side -side Challenge, all part of the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Valley Championship. side-by-side -side challenge got underway at this round, the National Capital Rally in Canberra. Four rounds will be contested between Can-Am and Polaris. As has been the case, it's almost a handing over of the baton from one manufacturer to another as they increase the power and reliability of their respective machines. Last year, Polaris had the upper hand with the new Razor 1000. Bigger wheels, wider track and a higher top speed meant Cody Crocker would dominate. With the announcement of a new Can-Am machine late last year, Michael Guest was rubbing his hands together, knowing the 2015 season might well swing back in his favour thanks to the turbocharged Maverick XDS. It's delivering the goods so far. Um, we were quicker than... Cody at the test yesterday or at the media day um, by a little bit more than I thought actually so that, that's all going well. Um, the difference is not huge but turbocharging does give you that extra bit of torque and punch. Um, we've got new uh, rear suspension geometry as well so we've improved our grip a little bit more so the whole package is going really well. But Michael Guest wasn't here to do battle on his own. We're both pretty excited. We've, um, we've just done a little bit of testing and it's, it's noticeably quicker to last year's machine and uh, they've really improved a few things. We've got power steering, longer wheelbase and uh, yeah, it's very exciting. It didn't take long for the Turbo XDS to show its colours. Guesty taking the honours through the two opening morning stages. It wasn't much Cody Crocker could do in the Polaris. Yeah, we've lost maybe 20 or so seconds I think in two stages so Look, not, it's not too bad, but uh, we're giving it everything we've got. So we're sort of hoping that uh, the other side might be the one that, that runs into trouble and we get some time back. But, you know, we've, we'll give it, keep going, never give up. I sort of don't change my approach. I'm always about 100% flat out. And so if they're beating us, well, good on them. We'll, uh, we'll just keep going on what we're doing and, and see where we get to at the end of the day. Crocker and fellow Polaris pilot Ian Hughes stayed in touch with the super quick Can-Ams, but they needed a break from the boosted Maverick. That break came when Shivers was a no-show at the end of SS3. The wheels falling off his rally when a split pin broke on the axle and one parted company. Oh, no. Shit, what's that? We've lost a wheel. Oh, hell. He and co-driver Peter Harris forced to drastic recovery measures, but their race was run for heat one. Got the Navi hanging out the side for a bit of a counterbalance and yeah, just had to drive it out on three wheels. Michael Guest spearheaded the afternoon attack for Can-Am, but a drive belt broke in SS4 and he was left sidelined to watch Polaris race away to a heat win. It's an oft-quoted saying in rallying, to finish first, first you must finish. And Crocker would certainly do that for Polaris. It was game on again in heat two, Guest out to avenge the loss of Can-Am's first competitive appearance of the season. You know, it's one of those things. Um, there's lots of crests where the car gets a little bit light or airborne out in that Cohen Forest and probably just got a, you know, a little bit of an over-rev there somewhere to stretch the belt and, th and that happens. Maybe I can take a bit of blame for that. 
But uh, today it's very technical, twisty. You know, um, it, they're real drivers roads out there today, and I'm really looking forward to it. He led from the front as well, a second a K quicker through the first two stages. But it was Crocker who stumbled, right not Guest. A right rear brake line snapped. Oh, fuck in no brakes. In the crest. Nothing at all. Dip. Zero brakes, so that's uh... right clip. <laughs> it's hard to drive without brakes. It's amazing how much you rely on them. Mm. All right, we'll see if we can crimp the line or something and fix it up. Not surprisingly, Ian Hughes beat Crocker through the final morning stage, taking advantage of his teammate's brake issue. But the former rally champions bounced back after service for a repeat of the east-west stage to close the gap to the quick Can-Am. Yeah, it's good to, good to have it all back going hard. We're um, flat out. We took about eight seconds off our previous time in that stage, so pretty happy with that. But yeah, I guess he's got some pace there, so we'll... Uh, We'll see what we can do for the next round. The Anglo Moyle Turbo Maverick was back in the game with all four wheels firmly attached for heat two. But Nathan Shivers was not at all dealing with the increased power the blower was delivering. Michael Guest was delivering though every stage a winner for the final day, giving Can-Am and Polaris a heat apiece. But after the belt problems of yesterday, it was Cody Crocker and Greg Valletta who took the weekend glory on the top step of the podium, with Ian Hughes and David Piper second. Third was the best Michael Guest and David Green could do for Can-Am, but the gauntlet had been laid for next round north of the border for the International Rally of Queensland. Stay tuned next week for all the action from the main game at the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship as we bring you all the highlights of the Outright Championship and see just how good these new generation four-wheel drives really are. Hope you can join us. In the meantime, keep up to date with all the news at rally.com.au. Till next time, I'm Greg Rutz. is made possible by Kumo Tire, Pedder Suspension, Armour, STP, Co Tire, Can Air, Polaris, and our supporting partner, East Coast Bull Bars, world's best alloy bull bars.